Parrots are the third most popular pet in the world, but the number one most rehomed. Help us put an end to this. Listen to the Parrot Training Podcast, brought to you by Bird Tricks. Hey everybody, welcome to another session of the Parrot Training Podcast. I'm Dave Womack. I'm Jamie Womack. And we are from Bird Tricks, where today we're going to be talking about all the reasons why you should clip your bird's wing feathers. Reason number one. And that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> no, so we'll jump in a little bit. Um, I think that we- We're gonna get some epic hate right oh, off yeah. the bat. Yep, if you hated that, Leave it in the comments. No, uh, so basically, we <laughs> there is, I think, a few reasons why you may want to clip your bird's wing feathers. Um, however, you hear us say a lot that free flight is for every bird, it's not for every person. So that right there should let you consider if you are really the right person to own a pet bird. Uh, I've likened it before to, you don't want your kid to run across the street and get hit by a car, so cut their Achilles tendons and lock them in the room so that they can't escape, right? You're trying to just helicopter parent uh, your bird by clipping its wings when really what you should be doing is just training the dang thing. That's how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so I think that <laughs> you're on to something with the fact of why people want to clip their bird's wings. There's a lot of reasons why people want to, and it's mostly becomes because it's their, it becomes an inconvenience to have a flighted bird. Yeah, it's and, annoying. And the clipping of the wings is a shortcut. Now, let me say this. If you get a bird, a perfect scenario is a parakeet or a budgie, right? You get a budgie from the pet shop, it's not really a bad thing to have that bird's wings clipped when you first get it. Why? Because it can't escape, which means you're gonna have a better chance of getting to train that bird properly so that by the time its wings do grow out, it's you're not chasing it around the house, you've already put in the training. I think that would be one of those scenarios where, you know, I, I don't know that I would say, yeah, yeah, go do that, but I think that's kind of, it's a typical scenario of it, when a, we went to the pet <clears throat> shop, they're all clipped. So it's kind of making the best out of a scenario that you're forced into, where when you get the bird from a pet shop, they're all clipped. I mean, literally the label was clipped parakeet. It yeah. wasn't an option to have it fully flighted. So I think in that case, you need to just look at what you can do. You can make little obstacle courses. You can make little things with ropes where the bird is able to get around, but it's not, um, obviously it can't fly. So you're doing it in a safe way and you're implementing all your training up front so that when it is flighted, it's not trying to escape you. Um, however, the thing that I don't like about people intentionally clipping a fearful or um, even aggressive bird to be able to tame and train it is that you likely are pushing past the boundaries yeah. of the bird and you're not using positive techniques. So usually when people are looking at doing that to get a certain outcome, it's because you're not patient enough as a person to work through what it takes to earn the trust and, and figure out a way to man manipulate that animal to making the decision that you want. So a lot of bird training <laughs> is trying to figure out, okay, how can I get the bird to want to do the behavior then that you want it to do. Um, you need to really reprogram your mind of like, how can I make it want to do those things versus <laughs> how can I force it or just keep it there? It's making me think of the movie where I want you to want to do the dishes. Yeah, that's <laughs> legit. Okay, you should want to want Nobody to do the dishes. Nobody wants to do the dishes. You want to do the dishes because it makes me feel better and helps me out. Uh, anyways. <laughs> So, I wonder how many people know what the heck we're oh, talking yeah. about on that. Pro probably um, half. <laughs> yeah, so, and I think the only other time, well, okay, so the one time that we had a consultation that we actually agreed that a light wing clip was necessary was, do you remember? Mm -mm. The blind baby lovebird. Oh. Do you remember that consultation? Vaguely. So this, this lovebird chick, I believe, was hatched blind. Yeah, it's coming back. Um, and we <laughs> had gone through this consultation of setting up this kind of handicap enclosure so that this bird couldn't fall. One of the really interesting things is since that consultation, we actually had one in Australia with a blind cockatiel. And what we found from putting cameras up and watching this bird was that it actually walked backwards. 
It, it used its tail as like a like a walking stick. Um, yes, it used its tail to feel. Yeah. So then it would then turn around. When it would feel a wall, it would then turn around and climb up that wall. It was really, really amazing really the cool. things they could discover with this. Now with the lovebird, since it would be naturally fledging and trying to fly, Luckily enough, this lovebird didn't want to. It really wanted to be close to its human all the time, but we were fearful that if something scared it to the point of just take off flight at full speed, it could break its neck or get hurt because it's literally blind. Um, so I remember that being the only time that you and I looked at each other and were like, are we going to recommend that she does a light clip? We don't want it to plummet and like fall like a rock but we didn't want it to be able to catch full speed and agility. And so that's, you know, we, we came at you pretty hard at the beginning of this video, but the reality we. with, yeah, we, um, the reality with clipping your bird's wings is that they're designed to use those, right? I mean, they're, they're meant to fly. Their respiratory system works at full capacity when they're in flight. There's just so many health benefits for them to be able to do that, that it just, it just makes sense. But the biggest thing about it is if your bird is clipped, um, and this is really key for certain species as well. If they fall and they're clipped, they'll break their keel bone. They can just sustain some serious injuries. It's bad. Um, one of my, my favorite stories, it's kind of funny, um, is with Ruby, the, or not the macaw, but Ruby the, is it Rudy? African gray? Or Ruby. Yeah, the African gray. Ruby. Ruby. So with Ruby, uh, this is the African gray that Sean owns and the bird wouldn't let go of of with one foot. So it'd start to step up, but it would always hold on with the other foot. And then he'd actually trained it to step up with the other foot, thinking that that would work and it didn't let go with the other foot. So <clears throat> I asked him, I said, well, did, did your bird used to be clipped? And I said, did she ever fall? And he's like, yeah. So what happened is this bird developed a fear of its human and standing on its hand because it was off balance because they're designed to be balanced with their wings fully grown out, especially the more like compact birds, like, like Senegals and grays, you know, um, it does affect them all. But in, in this particular situation with the African gray, she fell and she got hurt enough that she was petrified of stepping up onto a hand. And what a terrible relationship that that starts out for you and your bird. If it's clipped and it fell once, now it may not want to come to you and you may not understand, hey, we're trying all your techniques, it doesn't want to come to me. Well, it's because it, it was afraid of falling and it fell and got injured. So that's really where the wing clipping comes from is really just a safety standpoint. And I feel like wing clipping overall is used in not the best ways. It's used as kind of a shortcut. Oh, my bird flies and attacks people, so I'm just gonna clip his wings so now he can't. Oh, oh my bird like hates that person, so I'm just gonna clip his wings so that it takes more time for him to get over there and that person has time to get away. It's, it's kind of a cover up. And a lot of the times when we see clipped birds that are going outside or clipped birds that are, are in the home, we're not seeing the real root of the issue because people, the bird knows when you take it outside or in a scary area and it's clipped, it can't fly away. So fight or flight, it, the flight part goes away and they usually have to be aggressive to show mm -hmm. any sort of response. Um, and that's why I really don't like to work with clipped birds because I want to be working with the bird in its entirety. I don't want to be working with a cover up of the root of the real issue there. And if you don't address the fact that that bird maybe doesn't like somebody in your home or is doing these flighted attacks, if you don't get to the root of that problem, clipping the wings might work instantly as a shortcut, but in the long term and the root of that problem of that bird not liking that particular person, that's not fixed. You didn't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really where the focus should be is how can you prevent that? How can you discourage it? How can you make it so the bird doesn't want to do that? Um, you know, how can you make it more reinforcing to do something else? It also gives you a false sense of security that you can take your bird outside because, oh, he doesn't fly, he's clipped. Well, if you watched our video with Claudia in Hawaii, she actually came to us to free fly because her bird was clipped and it flew. <laughs> to the beach. Yeah. So, I mean, what a dangerous thing. And and so I get the fear of like, well, I don't want my bird to fly off. And that's why we have the things like on Patreon, we teach you how to flight train your bird um, so that if your bird got out, you know how to recover it. And your bird has the confidence and the skills to be able to come back to your home. Because when a bird gets outside on accident, it's not generally trying to get away. It is fearful and it flies off because it doesn't know how to come back or it keeps getting more and more scared because people took the shortcut. They clipped the wings and they never did the actual training. So yeah. if you're watching this video still, you're one of the types of people that is willing to put in the time to learn and to apply that type of stuff. And so that's what it really takes is just putting in that time to, to train them properly. And also I had a consultation just a few days <laughs> ago and it was about a 
um, a cockatiel and they had said oh we have this beautiful garden in our backyard we love taking our cockatiel out there as a way to spend time and my immediate thought was is the garden netted and is yeah. this bird clipped you like what's going on you know how how are they feeling okay about this because I knew they weren't a free flight student of ours and uh, and soon it came out that they had clipped the bird and that's why they were taking it outside because they felt like it wasn't gonna fly away and then it flew away they're like, so we got another cockatiel. We don't know whether or not we should clip it. And I said, okay, the first cockatiel you got, you didn't train and you clipped the wings and it flew away. You're scared to not clip the wings because you will believe, you believe it'll fly away. Yet you're gonna get the same outcome, whether it's clipped or unclipped and not trained. And so I was like, it's really not a question of clipping or not clipping. It's whether or not you're willing to put in the time for the training or not training. Um, that's where it really came into bar. And I was like, you know, if you really want to hang out with your bird outside, net your garden, net it. And that way your bird can be outside with you. And your, but, bird, your bird won't stand a chance if it does get out and it's clipped. Did you ever share the story about the dove? No, that's a mortifying, embarrassing story. Why would I share that? You're going to share oh, it? Oh, yeah. It's a great story. So, okay. Even uh, with a flighted bird. Um, so, we, <laughs> I, we were getting ready for our, one of our tours. And so, I went to the trailer. And I was getting everything ready with the larger birds. And and uh, I had just bought a smaller travel carrier to move the birds in and out of the outdoor aviary to get them into the, uh, into the, into the theaters or the trailer or wherever. So I was like, oh, Jamie used the little one and she felt guilty putting the birds in a little itty bitty travel carrier. But the thing was, I didn't want the birds to get loose. So about two minutes goes by and she comes back to the trailer with her head between her legs and she's just like, I lost. Head between her legs? Yeah, I lost. Tail more. between your legs. Well, you're pretty hunched over. Oh my God. <laughs> she, and, she's, and she's like, I lost one of the doves. And so I was like, okay, where did it go? And she's like, I don't know, I just lost it. This, and these are fully flighted doves. Yeah, um, it went up and away. I think but they were also I said. out of shape. So, and I knew that. And so uh, I, I went to the backyard and I saw it. And so I was like, great, let's go get it. And so it took flight across the street. And so I had Jamie stay where she was. And I sprinted around the block to get over to where the dove was. And she could still see it. And right as I was about to get it, I screamed at him because a dove or a, a hawk started to swoop him and Dave had no idea. Dave didn't even see the hawk. Well, and so I heard her yelling about the hawk. Oh, and so I was just sprinting after the dove and it was trying to take flight, but it was it's very out of shape. And this is fully flighted, right? So it was between me and the hawk and I ended up getting the dove. Everything's fine. We still have them. It was amazing. But... I watched everything from standing on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking out. But if if it's that close, okay, this was over the course of probably two minutes that we would have lost the dove to a hawk just like that. Um, and that's a fully flighted bird. Imagine what disadvantage your bird's gonna have if and when it gets out on accident, if it's clipped. It's just, it's going to get eaten by a hawk. And sadly, we have clients, we have friends, we have uh, strangers tell us these stories all the time of their clipped birds getting out or even just not, you know, like they're, they have it on their shoulder or on or a perch. Or in a tree. A lot of people set them in trees just to let hang out. And they get nailed by a hawk. Um, and I can say in our immediate group, I don't know anybody that's had free flighted birds actually get eaten by a hawk. There's been engagements no. but where there's chases, but the birds are trained and they fly well. But we've heard about it from stories from people of other, you know, just of other people in general, just of people losing birds to hawks. But yeah, I thought that dove was a goner. Dave's an amazing dove catcher. <laughs> <laughs> so it is your responsibility to, uh, to, to train your bird, which obviously if, like I said, if you're still watching this, you're the kind of person that's gonna put in that type of time and effort. And, and that's what we really need. Our mission has always been to save birds one person at a time. And by taking the shortcut and clipping your birds, you're not doing your bird any favors and you're not doing yourself any favors. Um, it's worth putting in a little bit of time. It's so rewarding to have free flighted birds because they are with you by choice and not by force. I think that's the big difference. I totally forgot what we were talking about when we got onto the dove tangent. <laughs> Thanks for bringing me back. <laughs> I was just shame, <laughs> shame. <laughs> Felt awful. Uh, Don't so judge me, guys. If you guys uh, have similar stories, leave them in the comments. If you know of somebody who lost their bird to a hawk because it was clipped, or 
If you have uh, a similar story. Don't share those stories. Well, I think it's important for people to see that it's not just us trying to overhype something and that it's, uh, these are, these are real scenarios where people lose their birds and you know, it's, to me, it's more than just a pretty thing in a cage. It's part of our family. So I'm trying to think of something they could share that's happy. But I can't come up with anything this fast. I can't handle the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all I got. Good so job, if you babe. need anybody to babysit your doves. It's not me. It's our neighbor. Yeah. He's really good. <laughs> I will always use the small carrier. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for listening or watching. And uh, if you haven't already, like this video, subscribe, and leave some comments. Nice comments. Or not. Encouraging comments. <laughs>